Is this the end of passwords? Well, there is a direction moving in that trend. And of course, a lot of your big Silicon Valley guys are really championing this idea that passwords are bad and we got to get rid of them. And uh, they have been working with the W3C, who is, of course, the consortium for the Internet. And uh, unfortunately, it's mostly just a lot of big Silicon Valley companies pushing the web in directions they want to go. Now, is this good or is this bad? Mm, I'm on the fence. I'm on the fence. So I'm going to kind of talk about this from a couple different directions. So uh, as of this week, W3C and the FIDO Alliance finalize web standards for secure and passwordless logins. Okay, so what is a passwordless login? Well, this would be any type of login that utilizes some other factor other than a password to log into accounts. Of course, Microsoft was trying to do this with the Windows Hello, one of the creepy features that they put into Windows 10. Please wait, your PC is scanning you. I don't want my PC to scan me, thank you very much. Uh, of course, Brian Lund Duke had that amazingly hilarious story one time where he was talking about um, his, uh, he had the, was it the Xbox that had the Kinect up there? And he, he runs out of the shower really quick. The Kinect was in there and he's running through the bedroom naked and the, the Kinect scans him apparently and makes some blinky thing and the thing would never detect him again. So he's like, yeah, from that day forward, never had that Kinect turned back on again. <laughs> you know, of course they're talking about biometrics. Uh, we talked about Samsung is now experimenting with a face palm, which is the radically, like these Things started okay, like if you really want to talk about biometrics, the best is a fingerprint scanner because especially on my phone here, you can pull this out and if I actually use the fingerprint scanner, I can pull this out and unlock the phone with my finger and by the time I get it out of my pocket and to my face, it is already unlocked. Versus the iPhone with the face scanner, you got to pull it out and you got to set it up here and then it's going to unlock. Now with the Samsung, they want to do this so you got to scan the palm. Just it's like it's getting weird. Um, and it's getting to the point where it's just like they're getting all of these technologies implemented in and eh, why didn't you just stop with the fingerprint? It actually had the least false positives and the fastest functionality. If opening the phone fast was really the point, they would have stopped there. But no, they keep on experimenting because I, I there's part of me that wants to grab my tinfoil hat because they want to collect as much biometrics as they can. Now, of course, the current marketing is that that information never leaves that device. Can we trust them in that? No, <laughs> no. I don't think that these companies have necessarily demonstrated that they can be trusted with our private data. And that's why I keep as much data off of my devices as conceivably possible. All right. Now, biometrics is not the only way to do. The other thing is if you want to use a YubiKey. So I have a YubiKey here. So this is actually a, a first generation one. I've had my YubiKeys for a while. Um, but this is a first generation one here. And uh, basically it is a USB stick. It works with a USB type A. You uh, slip this guy in there and this provides a two factor authentication on a physical device. Now, what this tends to produce for us is a good physical way that somebody would literally have to physically access that item. Now, again, with all of these technologies to make them more convenient, now they're making these keys that are so small, they're literally designed to be put and kept in your laptop, which means if somebody comes by and steals your laptop, now they have the identification for everything on the laptop. Well, that sounds like it's a step backwards in security. Additionally, somebody can come by and probably steal it out of your laptop and you wouldn't notice until the next time you go to use it. Hmm. Well, that seems like a back step backwards as well. My biggest beef with these is that uh, now it doesn't interfere with me a lot because I generally don't use logged in accounts on outside things. But the biggest concern is I'll be out and I'll be like, OK, I need to access my email somewhere. So I go in and I pull up some webmail email because it's some my junk throwaway email. I'm looking for something and they're like, oh, we don't recognize your login. We're going to send you something on another email. I don't have the information for that other email laying around. All right. I don't even know if that other email still exists, quite frankly. All right. I just put it on there because you required it. 
I know what the password is, I've never had a problem, I've never had an issue, and let's go ahead and leave it at that. So my biggest concern with these types of things, two-factor authentication uh, of this sort, is that I literally have to carry this device around with me anywhere I go in the event I need it, and it wants it, which basically means it is now a higher risk of getting stolen. So if I attach this to my keychain, this is very easy to see what it is. If somebody's scoping me out, if they get a chance to grab this off my keychain or grab the keys, now they've gotten in. Now, is it more secure to have physical things laying around? Probably. My chance of somebody coming in my house and stealing my keys to authenticate in is fairly small compared to somebody getting out there and trying to do a phishing attack or things like that. Especially since we're uh, protected around this place with a 9mm and you'd be lucky to get out alive. <laughs> okay, so that being said, um, that being said, there, there are major advantages and major disadvantages. I have a concern with anything that I come in, I enter the username, I enter the password, and that password that I enter, they're like, oh, well, everything's right, but we want another way to verify it's you. That frustrates me to no end because I may not be carrying these around with me for extra security. That's why I'm on the fence. Regardless, this is now a web standard and it is now implemented into Google Chrome as of a while back. It's now implemented into Firefox as of, I think, version 61. Uh, Edge, yeah, and Safari, I guess that works now as well. Is it the Safari preview? I don't know. Safari is definitely the last one on the list. But what this allows organizations to do is utilize that same type of API that caused a big stink with uh, things like your DRM API. So there's an API that's a standardized API that now can be used to link a um, some other type of factor, be it biometrics, be it a key like this, be it an NCF chip, whatever else it happens to be, to link that through the web browser into the account, which could in theory produce a better system. Now, all of this to me, it sounds like more of a conspiratorial thing because frankly, passwords aren't as bad as they these guys want the passwords to be. It's just that we have been taught about passwords completely incorrect. So this was an interesting one from The Verge. So this password, JI32K7AU4883, most systems would look at that and go, wow, well, maybe capitalize something, but otherwise very strong password. It actually is a surprisingly bad password because in the Taiwanese language, it actually says my password. <laughs> and if you were to look at the uh, Taiwanese keyboard, that's exactly what it is. Now, a password doesn't necessarily work by what the string of characters you see. It works by a hash of the string of characters you see. So as long as the hashes are similar, you usually can get into a system. And so this is, they're saying is a really bad password simply because it translates into my password in Mandarin. So Carbon Programmer, are you on here? <laughs> All right. Now, I didn't want to say talk much more about that, but I wanted to look at this one here because this one here, you look at a lot of your different things about creating passwords and they're, it's almost all the same. And it's like, it's like, I feel the same way as I do when some person sits here and tells me that I should have a, a carbohydrate based diet for healthy, optimal living, which is nowhere remotely close to what the science says. All right. Um, and so they're like, well, you got to have at least eight characters. Use an uppercase and, and a lowercase and a number and a special character. Make sure it's completely uh, unique and memorable. Mm, what am I? Am I Rain Man that I can remember a character password like that? Oh, my Lord, people. This is crazy. This is crazy. No, no person outside of Rain Man can memorize eight plus characters of some uppercase, some lowercase, random strings with numbers and special characters that's unique to every site. So then they're like, oh, just use a password manager instead. All right.
So let's look at seven myths about passwords. And, and this is actually funny because I was talking to a password security researcher uh, at Penn State um, a couple years ago, and she kind of went through literally this entire list. I remember her talking about, be, wouldn't surprise me to know she consulted on this article. But, you know, they, they had that. And then the next really bad thing is change your password every three months. That actually makes it your passwords infinitely worse. Do not be changing your passwords all the time. Only change your password if you happen to have a case where um, changing your password if you happen to have a case where you uh, where you suspect it has been has been compromised. All right. So looking at this over, number one, use a complex password gives you the best security. This is actually quite meaningless because a brute force attack goes through your passwords and it it doesn't matter if it's simple or complex. What matters for brute force is the length. Now, of course, there's a little clip here from Edward Snowden talking about this. And of course, Edward Snowden's advice is, hey, no, we want to keep passwords, but not passwords. We want passphrases. An eight character password, he says, only takes about a second for a modern computer to go through. So if you are familiar with Kali or Parrot uh, SecOp uh, Linux distributions, you know that passwords can be cracked fairly simple. But if you increase that to 16 characters from eight, and it doesn't matter if it's all lowercase letters or if it's a whole string of bunch of different things, 16 characters is infinitely better. So while password makes a bad password, Bob would make a bad password, Bob and Sally would make a bad password, Bob and Sally going to the grocery store to pick up milk and eggs is a very good password, all right? Now, not everything allows you to use a space. Not everything allows you to use some types of special characters. But number one, it doesn't matter how complex your password is. It matters how long your password is. All right, number two, uh, complexity more important than length. I guess I kind of talked about that one up here. Uh, complex passwords give the best. So one and two are kind of tied in. I already talked about that. You want length over complexity. Because if you can remember a long sentence or a long phrase, that's way better than something else. All right, number three, regular password changes improve security. The reason this is so abysmal, according to the security researcher I was talking about about passwords, is that what ends up invariably happening is if your password is required to change every few months, you start using the same password and incrementing a character in it. <laughs> And that decreases the security. And then it causes you to have it written down somewhere so you can remember. And, you know, and you get this kind of stuff going on. Um, Two-factor authentication is foolproof. Okay, never, ever, 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 ever use a cell phone for a two-factor authentication if you're talking about a standard SMS text message. Never use an SMS text message for a verification. It is raw text going all over the air that is extraordinarily easy to compromise. Someone can steal your phone very easily. Someone can access it and compromise it. This is why you need to never use that, okay? Two-factor authentication is not foolproof. Now, two-factor authentication done right can be an okay thing outside of the things I was talking about earlier that it drives me crazy. When I'm out doing something, I need to log in. And it's like, we detect this is a little unusual. We need a factor authentication. Dude, no. Just let me into my stupid account. All right. Um, and then, of course, there was that giant leak of all those SMSs um, that was leaked out, which was certainly problematic. Um, there are authenticator apps, which are a lot better to use. Um, so something like that is okay. Um, you want to avoid an online password manager. Somebody left in the comments here, uh, I saw breezing by. What about an offline password manager? An, an offline password manager, I think, is an okay thing. Especially some of your offline password managers can now be ultimately secured with one of these. Nextcloud can even be secured with one of these, I believe now, uh, in the latest versions. <clears throat> All right. Um, your password is safe with large companies. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, biometrics will solve our security problems. No, and I think that in my opinion, biometrics is the worst thing to use for passwords because it's too easy to spoof, too easy to fake, and completely impossible to change. Where if my password, if it gets compromised, I can change that. Um, and I think number seven, online password checkers are always accurate. Yeah, no. 
Um, you're best going with the thing we talked about earlier, utilizing a long pass key. Now, going back to these companies, these points talking about the passwords are horribly insecure. I've watched several videos on on the the Fido today, um, which is I think it stands for Fast ID Online. I think is what Fido stands for, and they're all like passwords are bad, passwords are insecure. No, guys, passwords aren't bad, passwords aren't insecure. It's just some people are incompetent, and incompetent people are always going to be incompetent. It doesn't matter. Don't destroy the internet for the rest of us, forcing us to go away with pass keys because a password or a pass phrase, maybe we should use that. A pass phrase is always better than some other weird thing that can be lost, stolen, can't really hack this. Again, lost or stolen or if I'm not carrying this around everywhere and I need to get into an account, man, that's the last thing I want is to be locked out versus a long pass phrase. Yeah, you have to worry about phishing, but these don't solve man in the middle and they don't always solve phishing. They can, they do better. The best thing is don't be incompetent when it comes to phishing. Understand what happens uh, what you need to do, what you need to have inside of your, your system to prevent phishing. Identify links. I question is this, if this is really a legitimate thing. For me, I use so few online accounts, the phishing accounts are easy. Oh, Dropbox, reset your password. Yeah, I don't use Dropbox. I don't recommend Dropbox. I think they're a horrible company. I won't use them. You know, Microsoft, you're, you're scary. Uh, I don't have a Microsoft account. Apple, uh, I don't have an Apple account. Uh, you know, who else have I been getting lately? UPS account, I don't have a UPS account. It's very easy to not get fish when you don't actually have all these accounts. Now, what if you do have the accounts? Well, you need to learn to look for the thing, the signs of a phishing scam. Google has a really good phishing quiz that you can do. I did it on a live news once. Uh, so that's kind of a, uh, kind of a, uh, an interesting thing. So keep in mind this, that the W3C is pushing the web off end, which is more a drive behind the big companies. There are parts of this I really like. There are parts of this that I really don't. And this is one of these things that, that we need to keep in mind, um, uh, one of these things that we we really need to keep in mind with uh, with our our world going forward is that there is no thing that's going to make it perfect. The best defense against a hacked account is being wise and knowledgeable yourself. Password managers, I think they're fine. Ultimately, you want pass phrases that are very long. You don't want it to be so complex that it's not memorable. And if you are going to use these types of services, definitely I'd recommend using a YubiKey rather than biometrics. That's kind of my thoughts. And I'm really on the fence. I don't know if this is a great thing or if this is a horrible thing. So I have here, uh, I'm dropping a link into the comments for you guys watching this live. That's a link in there to uh, Amazon, to the various uh, YubiKey products. So you can have a look at, uh, what is available as far as those. Some of these are, are, are NCF. If you need it for a cell phone, some of these are just basic USB. Some of these are interactive things like that. So have a look at those and, uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Is, is this a great standard? Is this an awesome thing? Or is this kind of the end? What's your thoughts on passwords? Are they near the end? Do we need to do away with them? Uh, is two-factor authentication as important as it is, or is it a, a better a better passphrase system we need? What are your thoughts? Uh, carry on the discussion in the comments down below. Thank you for making it to the end of this Switch to Linux video. You can have a look at another video right on over here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel or to Think Life Media, which is my own personal support page. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.